So in this video I want to expand on our enemy spawn system and uh, build it out a bit. At the moment we've got one uh, spawn point, so one enemy is spawned from one spawn point. So in this video I want multiple enemies to spawn from multiple spawn points. So we're going to generate a random amount of en enemies within our chosen range and um, generate them at three spawn points. So before we jump into our C sharp code I'm just going to place three spawn points across the map and let's rename it, let's call this one number three spawn point two okay and I'm going to give them a tag guys so we can loop through every object with the uh, in a given tag so I go to add tag element, element zero I'm going to call this enemy spawn point alright so just click at each of these objects and give the tag to them okay that's all we need to do in our scene so let's jump over to our C sharp code now um, we want this, we, I want to debug the uh, trigger, I want to destroy it as well but we don't need any of this stuff so I'm just going to comment it out in case we need to copy and paste it later on so okay the first thing we need to do is make an array so we can store all the objects within the tag we just created to do this we create a game object array let's call it um, enemy spawns let's just say that um, and to do this guys we use a built-in unity function game objects dot find that's the one find game objects with a tag so we're going to find all the game objects with the tag enemy spawn points that's what we called it um, so now we can refer to all the objects so uh, now we're going to loop through them for each game object point in enemy spawns so uh, we're going to reference each of the objects in this array as spawn points. So we're going to create a game object called, called spawn points. Alright, guys, so that's what we refer each object in this array as. And um, if you're going to store objects, make sure you reference it as a game object. So just a little pointer. Okay, so we want to generate a random amount of enemies. So let's create an integer number of enemies. Um, and we're going to use a built-in uh, unity function again, random.range give it a value 1 to 5, let's say that, that do and uh, we want to loop through these so I'm going to create a for loop and uh, let's define the new variable j, let's say that equals 0 uh, we're going to loop through this number of enemies so and for each increment we're going to plus 1 so and what do you want to happen in here? Well, okay, I should have done something. I want to create another value called i equals zero. So this counts how many enemies have been created. All right, guys. So just to keep a reference. Um, all right. So we're going to create our enemies in this for loop. So we want to go i plus plus because an enemy's been created. Um, make a game object called enemy, and uh, we're going to instantiate it. So I'm just going to copy this for now. So we want to, instead of a transform, we want to store these as game objects. So let's cast this as a game object, um, and we want to instantiate the enemies uh, at the spawn point. So I'm going to change that to spawn point. Okay. So okay. So what we can do now? Let's play the game. See what happens. Alright guys, so a random amount of enemies have been, in this case it's a cube, have been created at each of the spawn points but they're created at exactly the same position and because they're created at exactly the same position they'll bounce off each other and go flying. So just to prove my point, they'll just collide with each other and go flying. Boom. So we want to create them at a bit of a random position. Oops, click that. And to do that we just need to do another random value guys. So let's give another, uh, let's put another public um, float and I'm going to call this spawn area give <laughs> just call it whatever you want guys and I'm going to make it one unit so I want the enemies to randomly uh, instantiate one uh, in an area of one unit um, so we need to incorporate this in our instantiate so I need to split up this transform so uh, let's make a new vector 3 
spawn point dot x uh, plus random range again so we want a random range guys so from let's say minus spawn area give to plus to spawn area to the plus value so in this case minus one to one simple as that let's just copy and paste this twice more put it here so we can look it up easier y and z okay so simple as that let's close off the position vector 3 and then it goes back to our transfer rotation so I don't want to mess about the rotation we could do the same here and make it a random rotation but I want all the enemies to look in the in the same direction so let's play the game again if it loads so I'm expecting the enemies to be a little bit random positions now yeah that's a lot better <laughs> and two of the two enemies got created at each point so let's see again see if any more get created okay that's a bit better so four four and let's have a look two of them here so yeah it is random so simple as that guys um, so this is the new stuff so let's comment this out um, array to store each game object in the enemy sport point tag okay so counter for how many enemies are created we could use this e we could use this even more the uh, i value we can give each one a name so we can say enemy dot name okay equals enemy and then i so each of them has a unique name so let's play the game again wait for it to load okay so the enemy has been created let's jump to a scene and uh, as you can see each enemy has random names and that's really important uh, in a future video we're gonna store all the enemies in an array uh, in a global array so each script can uh, ref reference them uh, loop through the spawn points random number of enemies to be instantiated okay so loop uh, through number enemies and then all we do guys is create the enemy and give name alright so simple as that we've just um, looped through each of our spawn points uh, in our tag then we've generated a random value for how many uh, enemies were created and for each of those enemies we instantiate them and give them a name so simple as that we don't need that anymore so okay guys so in the next video I'll expand this even more we'll, we'll begin uh, building this out into an actual game and go from there so thanks for watching guys hope you've learned a lot in this video see you in the next video